Not to brag or anything, but I called this trailer so hard the day it came out. I had brokenly watched 20 minutes of the first film yesterday, or whatever it was for people in other time zones. I won't waste any more time though, let's get into this awesome trailer, because it is so dense and we need to get through it. Right off the jump we have a new Spidey suit and that classic art style. Very dynamic shots too, starting with Miles leaping towards the camera, ready to engage with the audience. Notice the chromatic aberration on the words too, this was used all the time in the first movie as a way to differentiate between the subject of shots and background features. Gwen slides in from the left for the them to utilize the rule of thirds on the right as it pans, again absolutely beautiful engagement with the audience through layers. You've got a standard pose at the end too, and also notice where she just rolled out from, an alleyway or a crash, those are police lights. Then a shot of holographic walls and mapping, I think this is in the shed of one of their dimensions. We get a new Spider-Man introduced in a yellow and purple suit, and these colors actually come up later as I'll mention. These two are obvious, and I believe this final one in the robe is none other than our lazy Peter Parker himself, just taking everything in a rather lax state. Miles is seen going through a wormhole, an effect I actually think I could pull off in my editing software, which is kinda cool. Next up is your wonderful brought to you by screens. Miles overlooks the city from a distance on top of a small tower, notice his distance away from everyone, the city is alive and full of life with lights covering the buildings. And let me draw your attention to how they've laid out the buildings in the midground. Well yes, cities do tend to look like this with suburbs on the outside obviously, and then moving into high rise buildings towards the centre as land becomes more valuable and all that other shit you don't care about. Consider the difficulty curve it represents, the whole of the last movie let him climb up to this tower. It's shown him what's possible, his capabilities. First he'll be pushed back down onto the flat roofs while he learns, remaining there as he finds his way among others. It's exhausting but he keeps pushing. Then at the city center it's time to put what he's learnt to the test. He can truly show off his abilities and skills, scaling obstacles like nothing before. I can't really tell if this is a sunrise or sunset but I'll go with the former. Sunrises are a new hope, a new beginning, a new chapter in his life, as will be emphasized later on. You guys might think I'm crazy but that big puffer jacket he's wearing also demonstrates how he's blocking people out. He's kept people away to keep them safe. I couldn't save my best friend, Peter Parker. And I don't do friends anymore, just to avoid any distractions. The animation of his head hang is perfect, and to link back to what I said with blocking people out, see that tight red clothing underneath the jacket? That's his old suit. He's keeping a part of himself hidden away, confining himself, constricting his personality, his character. This arc between him and his mum also seems pretty captivating as she comes to terms with her son no longer being the child that she can always watch and take care of. He's starting to go out and find his own way. We move into some flashback scenes from the first film, most likely just for trailer purposes, but wow do these lines hit. For years I've been taking care of this little boy. Making sure he is loved, that he feels like he belongs wherever he wants to be. This is what I want to emphasize. Miles, in my opinion, is going to be finding himself and where he fits in with everyone else. The music is so incredible too, there's modified Prowler theme in there as well to bring back the idea of Uncle Aaron. There are also these flowers on the right here, and flowers are used all the time to convey messages, but let's look at the colours. Perhaps unsurprisingly, yellow is typically associated with joy, optimism, and friendship, but notice how all of that is trapped by the surrounding purple petals. Loyalty, ambition, power. That's what he's going to need to reach that yellow centre. She then says that he wants him to do great big things, while it shows him saving at least six people from a car crash, but I think that he thinks that that isn't good enough. He wants to go out into the world and do great big things. He wants to be something more, someone more, like we all do in a way. I'm just here to share my opinion and hopefully entertain some of you all. I greatly appreciate your time, and it's true. I want to do great big things to make all of you enjoy whatever crazy experience life is and just make it that much better, if I can. Alright, sweet talk over, back to the trailer. She also might be talking to his dad here too, because she said he at the beginning, so they've nicely cut that in between the buffering lines on either side. Not bad, kid. And what I worry about most... I love you, Miles is they won't look out for you like us. The trailer digs deep here, it really shoots for the feels, and it succeeds. It pulls an immense amount of attention and focus onto family. I think the direction it'll take is that the friends and other spies he meets along the way might end up betraying him or putting their own best interests first. Part of the arc will be deciphering who's family and who's not. So obviously, Gwen and Peter will be family. I mean, who wouldn't want to make Gwen family? They hold onto each other's wrists, solidifying that friendship. And while someone, presumably Miles, is in the tubes, you can see them flailing around uncontrollably before they transition into him being in control. Focused. We see Gwen introducing him to the rest of the spies at some really trippy place. Like, what way is the right way up? This looks to be the most solid floor, but then that contradicts with where her and Miles are standing at the start. And Gwen's hair is falling down, so that means that's the floor, which means this is the ceiling. 
The triangular structure of the place, particularly down the center where the camera dollies through, there's a sense of unity, constructive and collective strength. This shot where they turn back might be reversed and they appear to be in some sort of lab, and you can tell there are giant fans or vents based on the light casted on Miles. Peter rocks up in a robe, so that consolidates my theory earlier, but he does seem very relaxed, meaning that the footage might not actually be reversed because otherwise he'd hopefully be a bit more worried about whatever it is. This is super cute. I really can't wait to see what they do with these two. They've always interacted super well, sometimes a little awkward but it just felt right. I love the idea that they're just upside down, chilling, talking, whatever, or just enjoying each other's company. I think it's really sweet. There's a few parallels here too. First, the callback to the beginning of the trailer, where is the sunrise? This appears to be a sunset. The ending of an era, or maybe the calm before the storm, as the light of day fades and the night starts to loom. Major props to the editing team on this trailer for picking out this line, not only for this scene, but also for lining up the word love with Gwen leaning against Miles. He never doubts that he is loved. The second parallel, of course, being a callback to the leap of faith scene. It shows that he has someone by his side, literally and figuratively. His judgment is clearer through the day instead of haze by night. The shot is static though, and I really don't know how to interpret that. It could show a lack of growth, a lack of willingness to put himself out there and take risks, or it could be that he's content with where he is in life, and he's being forced into change as his whole world gets flipped upside down. We're introduced to some badass looking characters. Spider-Man 2099 appears to be the villain for this story, and he's seen looking at a record for Rillia, Ryella, 011, I'm not really sure, at 5 minutes to midnight. It could be his daughter potentially based on the picture, although this is likely to be an audio section as we can see that the audio waveform is moving and it's on file 34. There's also a few other statistics and things sprinkled throughout the hologram but I really can't see the significance with any of it with the current information we have from the trailer. We also see that same shot from the beginning of the trailer but in a more extended form and then we go back to Miles and his mum talking together. And then hot damn does the trailer shift. <laughs> Shit. The camera starts wide and then zooms in to give that sense of distance. It also grounds the camera in a realistic spot, which is something that goes completely unnoticed when done well, but sticks out massively when it's not. There's a chase, and we can also see another chase going up on the top beam as well. Really hard to tell the context with this scene, and I'll let the more knowledgeable of you break down all the different spies in these shots because I'm not even going to pretend that I know. Also, let me draw your attention to the fact that that triangular structure is no longer present in the chaos, but is then brought back in part as he collects himself to expertly maneuver up and out of this place. Going back to the two shots that I skipped, notice the spider half in by some extreme highlights, giving whoever this is more powers probably, then a good look at Spider-Man 2099 from the front. Wonderful use of warm and cold colours to bring out contrast by the way. My theory here is that Miss Gwen is trapped in some sort of dimensional cage and is speaking to 2099 when she says that they're supposed to be the good guys, with we in reference to Spideys as a collective. We are supposed to be the good guys. We are. However, in contradiction to this, the technology used also appears to be very similar to the one I brought up earlier about it being in their sheds as they look around. Some awesome action scenes, and then a lot of text that is barely readable due to some effects and the fast pace of it all. But there is one that I can read, and it's in Spanish, which doesn't give too much as it only translates to, please follow the... But then using this other frame for a very brief moment and then some guessing work on my end, I believe the full message on the right side, at least, which means please follow the limit, as in the speed limit on the road which lines up with the environment they're in. The trailer ends with Miles being slammed into the ground, and just briefly we see his suit completely torn up, which is a little concerning to say the least, and then we also see how hard he's being pushed into whatever this is, and it's being dented completely. So that's it really, I think it looks amazing, and it looks like it'll be just as good as the first, but I won't keep you any longer than necessary. Thank you so much for watching, please consider leaving a like and subscribing if you enjoyed this breakdown, and let me know what you think in the comments, I probably missed some stuff, so let me know what you found. Check out some of my other stuff on screen or just by going to my channel. The Nine Realms Season 4 video will be out very soon, but until next time, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.